I you know, look at the person I'm talking to. Right. <laughs> I'm here with the one and only Mr. Granville Waiters. Um, most of you all know him as a standout basketball player at Columbus's High School. Went on to Ohio State University and uh, played in the NBA for several years. Uh, I, what, what team did you play for, Mr. Wick? Played with Indiana, Houston, and Chicago. Indiana, Houston, and Chicago. One of you played with one of your dear friends in college. You guys were a tandem. Uh, uh, Clark Kellogg. Clark Kellogg, yes. We played against, e against each other at, uh, for the state championship and then wound up uh, being teammates at Ohio State along with Herb Williams and then uh, wound up being teammates with the Pacers during my rookie year. Wow, wow. How did, how did that happen? Who were you drafted by? Actually drafted by Portland. Portland, yes. Mm -hmm. By the Trailblazers. And how did you get traded to Indiana? They just wanted you to play with Clark or something? What was that about? Well, that and uh, to come in as a center. Okay. Yes. Okay. What, and so you were, you, were you traded back to, how did you, you played with the Bulls for a while, didn't you? Well, after the Pacers, two years with the Pacers, and one year with Houston after that, and then uh, finished up with Chicago for two years. Wow. Who was on that? Can you remember some of those guys that were on that team, the Chicago the team? Chi Chicago? Let's see. Can I remember? Hmm. Uh, it was a guy named Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> I think we know who that yeah, is. Scotty Pippen, Horace Scottie. Grant. When those two guys came in as rookies, I yes. was there. And, wow. Uh, wow. Brad Sellers, Brad, I mean, yes. Brad uh, John Paxson. John, uh, John is from Dayton, Ohio. Yes, he, Dayton, Ohio, another Ohio boy. Yes. That's right, uh, that's right. And Brad, of course, played at Ohio State as well. That's right. Uh, Dave Corzine. Yes. Uh, and, and speaking of centers, an interesting, uh, we had the, what, what, his nickname used to be the A-Train, Artis Gilmore. Artis Gilmore. One of the strongest guys I've ever gone up against. Artis played for Jacksonville. Uh, yes, right? mm -hmm. in, in college, yeah. he was an amazing left-hander. Yeah, and the yeah. artist Gilmore. So tell tell us a little bit. You you have a I call it a ministry. Um, it's it's incredible. It's called Enter. You know, people call you a serial entrepreneur, or whatever that means. Yes. Uh, well, Enter stands for Entrepreneurs Networking Towards Eternal Revenue. Yes, sir. And uh, I'll take that back to uh, even as a teenager. Before I really got into basketball, I had a paper route. So I've always been, uh, let's say, economically uh, driven. Driven, yeah, yeah. we'll say that, that'd be a good word. Uh, my, my thing is, uh, one, of course, uh, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. Uh, okay. I can still remember my parents struggling to keep pants on me uh, because of my growth spurts and that <laughs> That's type for of sure. thing. Yeah. Um, but the point I'm making there is, uh, I was blessed enough to, again, do the thing I love to do and get paid a decent amount of money uh, doing it uh, in the NBA and, and being exposed and around a lot of money, folks. Mm -hmm. and, and the point I'm making there is uh, when I had those big checks coming in and wanted to support something, of course, I was able to write those checks and support. But what I've learned since then uh, is the old adage, uh, I'd rather teach folks how to fish instead of giving them fish. So that's kind of where some of the, when we talk about intra mm -hmm. entrepreneurs networking towards eternal revenue, is I've been blessed with some tools to uh, to help individuals, help families, help organizations, whether it's a church or nonprofit, to generate their own revenue to accomplish their goals and, and support their uh, their desires. We we talk about uh, the kids use the term flip the script, you know, flip whatever that flipping the script, and so there is a ministry that uh, you have uh, partnered with us. To, uh, to present not only to, to the body of Christ, but to really help people, we call it FLIP, which stands for Financial Life Improvement Plan. Can you can you kind of elaborate on that just for a moment, and some of your goals? Yes, again, with, with the tools that I feel I've been blessed with uh, yes, uh, are going to address our economic needs. Uh, when, when you look at, at the different needs of a family or of an organization, uh, anywhere from food, uh, there's basically five things, income, housing, Income, yes, uh, yeah, and uh, what we'll say the others, other two are uh, oh, shoot, one is uh, justice, yes, and, and health, yes. Uh, four of those things uh, require some economic resources, that's right, uh, to accomplish. I mean, that's healthcare, right. you need money for healthcare, no question about that. Um, housing, uh, same thing, so that's where income comes in to support those, justice. 
uh, the resources are to fight for justice. <laughs> Amen. And, Amen. Uh, you know, unfortunately, it's, there's not always a level playing field uh, when you look at different aspects of the uh, entire community and the human race. Flip, flip is going to be a big component for building H courts because one of our primary goals for what we call the Hope for the Nations campaign, which uh, literally highlights many, many ministry events that we do, like benefit concerts and uh, prayer marches, prayer walks, uh, we do uh, prayer breakfasts, economic summits that you will be uh, intricately involved in. Um, some of these are paid events, some of these events are um, driven by tithes and offering and giving, um, but FLIP has, has a integral part in building AIDS cords because um, one of the goals for the Hopeful Nation campaign is to create income opportunities um, to augment people's income. One of the things that we noticed happening in the late 90s um, when we started Hope Center years ago. Most of the people that we service were transient, destitute, um, homeless, uh, people that were dealing with abject um, poverty. And uh, we were there 24 7 providing housing for them, uh, clothing, groceries, uh, pastoral leadership, uh, church. I mean, we were whatever a person's contemporary need was, we met that need. Um, some people just need their appliances, you know, to make their life and their household better. That's what the church is supposed to be. That's what the church is supposed to do. So um, with H Chords, we want to represent, represent the, the kingdom of heaven. The church should have a 24-7 presence in the community. Um, why, why, is the eco, why is it very important for people to not only learn economic literacy, but biblical economics, and for the church to literally provide economic support uh, in terms of income, job opportunities? That's, that's what the H Corps represent. Why is that important? Yes, uh, and, and I would break it down into two main categories. To me, it's education and yes, provision. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, of, of course, uh, they say you perish through na lack of knowledge. Yes, sir. And I uh, want to change that. There's things out there that, again, tools that I've been exposed to and, and been blessed with that I want to uh, share with others. Uh, again, that education, that literacy side, and, uh, of course, provision, providing the, the needs of those families. Um, what, are, what are some of the ways that, that we want to present uh, FLIP to the body of Christ? I know we're going to do conference calls where people can literally get on, uh, they can get information, um, and through our economic summits, are, is there anything else that? And that's, that's pretty much it. Word of mouth, and, okay. and then of course the conference calls, webinars is of course what we're dealing with now. Is, is going to, the webinars are going to be much more uh, efficient and, and of course needed uh, because we're regulations in terms of gathering uh, so that's going to be an, again another tool from a technological standpoint to uh, uh, inform others and um, dr. King once said um, any religion that seems to be concerned about the souls of men but you're not concerned about the economic and social conditions that can cripple the soul is a dead and do nothing religion and need new blood I say any ministry that um, seems to be or professes to be concerned about the souls of men but we're not dealing with the social and economic dis conditions that's crippling the souls that they do nothing ministry in need of a blood transfusion and i know a lot of people that would be they want to be a part of ministry ministry was a part of our foundation and we can't run from our foundation running from the foundation is like a fish saying i don't need water anymore we have to run back too, but the church has to be there for them. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that's what I love about you, Mr. Wade, is that, that humanitarian uh, thing that's been in you since you were a kid. Now you know we can do it through Christ Jesus. Thank you very much Absolutely. for your time, your energy, and your effort, and thank you for what you're doing for building H-Cords across the country.